Good day and salutations, my friends. So happy to have you here and see all of your beautiful faces. Today, we're getting back into more gaming related content. And more specifically, we're going to be talking about the new DLSS feature within Warzone. Now, disclaimer, before we get too far into it, I do want to mention that this feature is only available for those on PC and using an NVIDIA graphics card. Don't get mad at me because I don't make the rules. But if you would like to share your frustration with me, then I do go live here on this channel every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. Eastern and on and Saturday morning. So feel free to pop on by and tell me how it makes you feel. But I would like to keep this video as short as possible. So let's jump right into the game, into the options and look at this DLSS feature. So the way to find this option is obviously you're going to go to your options at the bottom. And then from there, you're going to go to your graphics tab, scroll all the way down to the bottom within the post processing effects. And the second one in the option is going to be NVIDIA DLSS. Now, as you can see, I already have this set at performance because for my current setup, I feel that this gives me the best results. However, we'll go over what each one of these options does and how it looks in game when you have them applied. So I have some previously recorded gameplay going through each one of these features. So we'll go over that right now. So as you can see, I have some gameplay that I previously recorded up here. And first we're going to look at different screenshots from each and then I'll play through some videos so you can see the frames and how it works with each setting on. Now keep in mind that all this is done while playing on 1440p since I am on a 1440p monitor. Previously, before the setting came out to have DLSS, I played on 1080 because I just couldn't pump out that many frames with an NVIDIA 2080 graphics card while streaming and having other things up and other monitors. It just destroyed my frames so I could never play at that full 1440p that my monitor allowed me to. However, for this example, we will be at the full 100% quality for my monitor, which is like I said, 1440p. So you can see what kind of frames you would get worst case scenario in a more render heavy area in downtown as well as while I'm recording during this session so you can see this gameplay, which obviously takes more resources away from my computer and less into the game. So obviously it hurts my frames, which is where this DLSS feature comes into play and comes in very handy in my opinion, as you'll see. So the first screenshot that we have up here already that you've been looking at is at 1440p like i mentioned and with dlss disabled now as you can see in the top left hand corner we're running at about 87 i sometimes get up to like 92 ish frames while this setting's disabled with full 100 quality and like i said while recording at the same time and then the next thing we're going to look at is that versus performance so i'm gonna click over to performance tab that i have already marked here now the first thing i want you to pay attention to is the image quality difference because with this setting on you will be losing some quality in some areas of the game so let's look at that now and as you can see the game looks like it kind of smoothed out a little more and it's not as detailed but if you look in the top left hand corner you'll see the frames jumped up quite literally 30 FPS, which is absolutely insane. So by a literal click of a button, you could lose really not that much image quality while still playing at 1440p and jump 30 frames while playing Warzone. Now to click back to disabled, you can see exactly what it's affecting. I really want you guys to look at the tree, the pink tree right here to my right and look at the detail that we'll get back by having it disabled. You can see that the image looks way sharper, way cleaner. And overall, there's more contrast to the image. It's a more well-rounded and balanced image that's obviously more pleasing to the eye. However, it comes at the cost of frames. And back again to performance, you'll see it's more of a flatter image not as much detail like we were mentioning. However, it's really not that bad of an image and you get 30 more frames per second, which is honestly a huge deal. Then jumping from performance to balance. So balance is going to give you a little bit better of an image quality, but also try to balance it, like it says, to where you're getting also better game performance. So if we click on that now, so after clicking on it, there's not a huge difference in image quality if you're paying attention to this pink tree i'll go back to performance you're not really seeing too much detail putting back into things like the tree or the rock here to my left or the buildings on the sides however if you look at the highlights and shadows that's where you see the biggest difference you can see between the two there's a lot more contrast to the image which could 
be a little bit easier to see things at the end of the day. However, look up in the top left, we're running at about 118 FPS, which is not a crazy difference. And that's to be expected considering the image quality doesn't have a crazy difference either. And like I mentioned before, we will be doing a live action test of me running down a street in downtown, which typically takes a lot to render. So we'll get a good idea of what it looks like while moving around and doing things in Warzone. And there's also one other thing I want you guys to see with these settings on. Then jumping from balance to quality, you can see we do get a lot more of that image quality back. We bounce back and forth. You'll see this drop down one frame. However, that's really not a super accurate FPS since it is a screenshot. As we all know, FPS bounces. It fluctuates a lot up and down. But if we go from quality back to disabled, you can see there's really not a crazy difference in the image quality itself. You still get a lot of detail in the image with quality because obviously it is focusing more on the quality of the picture you're receiving. And the plus side of this is that you get way more FPS using this setting. Now jumping from quality to ultra performance, which ultra performance is going to be, as you will see in a second, the worst looking image of all of them. It's super muddy, super blurry. It doesn't look good at all. This is actually my least favorite of all of them. And as you see in the top left says 118. Again, this isn't an accurate, accurate representation of FPS. Really the main purpose of this stage is showing you the image quality differences within this setting. And really they also say when it comes to this particular setting with ultra performance, it's meant for 8K gaming. So I guess if you're playing on a 8K monitor, then you're going to get a little bit better of an image quality. And so just kind of keep that in mind. However, as it stands, it's 1440p and I can only imagine on 1080, this ultra performance looks absolutely terrible and I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. Now, like I said, skipping ahead here, we will be doing some live action, literally just running down the street straight ahead. There'll be some movement in there. So you can kind of look around, make the image render a little bit more so we can get an idea, a more accurate representation of what the frames in particular are going to look like. So keep your eye on the top left hand portion of the screen so you can get an idea of the FPS. Again, 1440p and this is with DLSS disabled. So it's off completely. As you can see, we're running around mid 80s when it comes to FPS, a lot to render in downtown, tall buildings, trees, a lot going on. Uh, so obviously your FPS is going to struggle when it comes to this kind of area. And now obviously you see we just switched to performance. So running down in performance, you can see your FPS instantly jumped about 30 frames, if not 40 frames. Actually, we saw we spiked up around 125 was 127 129 135 in this portion which is absolutely insane especially for what i'm typically used to before the setting came out now obviously you're going to see us switching again to balanced so again this is a balance between image quality and frames let's see what we can peek at with frames when it comes to this looking around trying to make it render as much as possible so far 129 is our spike 132 i saw 120 so we'll pause it there as you saw between the image quality between performance and balance there wasn't a huge huge jump in quality like i said in the more contrasty areas between highlights and shadows there was more detail and then in performance where it didn't focus as much on graphics obviously a little less image quality but you get a little more frames so at the end of the day that's kind of a toss-up which do you prefer at the end of the day i really don't think there's gonna be that much of a difference i prefer every last frame I can get, especially when the difference between the image quality is negligible. So that's just my preference at that point. Now, moving on from balance, we will go to quality. So starting out here with quality, you see our frames instantly. You can tell there's not as many frames as the previous two options because we're putting more of an emphasis on our visuals and our so far our current spike with FPS was 125. And that's what we landed at was 125 for our max amount of frames in that area. So about 10 frames less than the performance tab, which I personally prefer out of all of them. However, you're not getting as good of a quality, which there is a pretty decent quality jump between performance and 
quality. And as you can see right up here, now you can see quality is technically preferred for my monitor at 2K Gaming, 1440p is 2K Gaming. So for what it's worth, that's what they recommend. However, these are just recommendations. They're not things that you absolutely have to abide by. Now moving to ultra performance, my absolute least favorite. You can see the image is absolutely terrible, mushy, muddy, grossness. Um, on this straightaway here, we peaked at 131, which is the highest so far in that straightaway. Um, obviously it's less to render because it just looks terrible and and it looked like we peaked at 131 for that which is technically less than the 135 that we got with the performance now that could just be a fluke or maybe I moved around more in that than I did with the performance but at the end of the day I don't think ultra performance is even close to worth it I just wouldn't touch it with a 10 foot pole ignore that option it just looks gross and really the FPS that you may gain from it is not worth it because uh, you're not gonna be able to see anyone on the map anyways. Now here in these screenshots I'm going to show you is where really you're going to just see the main difference in image quality. When it comes to the contrast between highlights and shadows or a sharpness of a corner of a building or the clearness of the leaves on the trees in Verdansk, Really, those are all things that you won't even notice. So in my mind, I say you pick the best option when it comes to your FPS minus ultra performance, which that one will look gross no matter what. But what I wanna show you here is really all that this DLSS is going to affect. And if it bothers you, it bothers you and you don't have to use it. But if it's something that you can get by and don't really care for, which I don't, then I suggest using one of these DLSS settings and what I'm gonna show you really is just the ground loot and the boxes and stuff like that that you pick up. They, you can tell there's a huge difference in how they render in game. Now, as you can see, this looks pretty normal. This is with DLSS disabled, as you can see by my frames as well. And once I put it to performance, which is the one that I personally use, you'll see instantly, it instantly turns into a Nintendo 64 game. These graphics look absolutely terrible, but as you can see with everything else around the room, that's really all that it affects. So this is what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to your image quality overall, this is really the only thing that is changing. Everything else is going to be things that you honestly are not going to notice while actually playing the game, unless you're nitpicking and sitting here and looking at every little detail like, oh, that changed, that changed, that changed. You're not doing that in game. I think it goes without saying that the results that you saw in this video as far as your FPS and your image quality will vary based on your current setup. Are you gaming on 1080p, 1440p like myself? What are your other graphic settings set at? I have my texture pretty low and pretty much everything set in the graphic setting low to get the max FPS as possible because I have yet to get my hands on the 30 series graphics cards from Nvidia. So to kind of wrap everything up and give you my summary on it, I do feel like DLSS is a really good option that has been added into Warzone, especially if you're gaming above 1080p. But of course, with most things, especially when it comes to technology, there's no one size fits all answer when it comes to which settings should you use. A lot of it comes down to preference and it also comes down to what the specs of what you're currently gaming on. If you guys wanna see these settings being used live and in action, be sure to tune into my streams every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 6.30 p.m. Eastern and on, and every Saturday morning. And you can see firsthand there really is no difference in image quality. However, there is a huge difference in the frames that I get. As always guys, if this video was helpful to you, please leave a like on the video. It really does help the channel. And if you want more videos just like this, please leave them in the comments below of any ideas that you have and make sure that you're subscribed with notifications on so you don't miss those videos. But past that, that's all I have for this one. I'll catch you in the next one.